Good morning. It's great to have you with us. Thank you for being here as a part of Unity of Walna Creek as we create a greater consciousness of abundance. Today we're going to touch on what it opens us and how this divine love can flow more freely in and through our lives for your consciousness of abundance, for the spiritual blessing you bring. Thank you for joining us. Please join us in singing our next congregation song. My soul is welcome here. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. Oh, my soul is welcome here. Oh, my soul is welcome here. I am getting the message loud and clear. My soul is welcome here. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just where I'm supposed to be. Oh, my soul is welcome here. Oh, my soul is welcome here. I am getting the message loud and clear. My soul is welcome here. Come up on time. Oh, my soul is welcome here. Yes, my soul is welcome here. I am getting the message loud and clear. My soul is welcome here. I am getting the message loud and clear. My soul is welcome here. Let's throw the band for a loop, right? It just felt right, so I did it. Please uh, help me welcome a new song leader, Dorothy Edwards, also known as Dot.
And our special guest artist today, one of your very favorite people, Carol Manson. <laughs> and of course, she is ably backed up by Fusion. Please join me in welcoming our online friends. Turn to the camera and say, hey. Thank you for being with us today. Your presence is always enjoyable, and you add richly to our service. My name is Sheila Gautreau, and I am one of your ministers here at Unity of Walnut Creek. And if you are new to Unity, I would like to say a very special welcome and also to share with you that we are a positive path for spiritual living. And that, what does that mean? That means that in unity, we offer you with practical tools and understandings of spiritual truths that you might use in your life to have more joy, more prosperity, wholeness, great relationships, anything you're heart could possibly desire in simple step-by-step -step processes. We also honor all the paths to God. We recognize there's one God individualized within each of us, but we honor every path to that one presence. Our movement, and that is what we are, we are a movement, is based on the power of affirmative prayer an affirmative process that our co-founder Myrtle Fillmore used in having a personal physical healing. And that you might have a relationship with the feeling that is generated by affirmative prayer. We'd like us to join together in saying our opening affirmative prayer statement. Together, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Let's take that in. Breathe it in through the heart and feel it moving through the bloodstream, through all the cells of your body, through every fiber of our being. And again, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. Let's take that in even more. Let it resonate. And once more, there is only one presence and one power in the universe and in my life, the all-loving goodness of God. And take that in. Take it in and know it for ourselves at a personal, deeper level. And hold that truth to be self-evident in our lives. And so it is. Amen. Please join us in our Lord's Prayer.
not in temptation, but deliver us from error. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory So we enter into our experience of prayer. So just take that deep breath through your heart. From the, those words so ancient, shared by so many. And now, as we move within, as we reach to touch that very depth of our own being, Entering into that center of the heart, I invite you as it's comfortable to join in another beautiful prayer, the Om. Father, Father, God, how many beautiful ways we find to bring our awareness to you. The sounds, the words, the feelings within our hearts. Guide us now to touch you deeply within our beings to know with a knowledge that fills us completely of your presence and your love. For in all the words, in the sounds, there is that which includes it all. And that is your love. And we can touch that without limit here within our own hearts. Sometimes it's easiest to recognize that love as we just feel the love for the people in our lives who are perhaps at that point of struggle, and our compassion reaches out to them to embrace and hold them, to know that there is that infinitely greater love responding to them, caring for them, healing them. Sometimes we are able to simply let go and let ourselves feel right here, right now, your love for us. 
an infinite love. A love without condition. A love that embraces us every moment. A love that illumines our way. That constantly heals, uplifts and guides. And so we breathe that love. Letting that feeling fill our hearts and radiate into our bodies. For knowing that simple truth, God is love. In this moment, we know your presence. In us and as us. And from this point of love, how wonderful it is to find at the very center of our hearts that place of stillness. We're now deeper than thought and words, deeper than feelings. We simply come to rest in you. Being one with the one. So we enter into this sacred stillness simply using those beautiful words given by the Master. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Peace, be Mother, Father, God, infinite love, beloved presence. It is so beautiful to discover that we are held in your infinite heart. That your love flows through us. And so we gratefully send forth this love. We let it move in and through our hearts and radiate it forth for its power heals and uplifts. And so we send this beautiful love first to, into our own bodies to touch every cell and system and call us into vibrant, vital wholeness. 
We send it to mind and heart, calling forth the wisdom and understanding of your love within us. And now we radiate from our hearts this love and we send it to each one who is dear to us. We enfold each person knowing they are treasured by you, blessed by this presence of love, healed, guided, lifted. And we send this love from our hearts across the spiritual community, blessing each person and flowing through them to bless everyone in their world. This divine presence, this radiant love flows through us to every prayer request brought here. We know with each one you are enfolded in divine love and lifted to that which is the highest. And we send this love. It flows from our hearts across the communities in which we live. It flows on across this nation. And it flows on to bless all the peoples of the world, to call forth the peace the beauty of each being and their wisdom. This divine love flows through our hearts and joins with the prayers of all who seek your presence, whether in mosques or synagogue, temple or church, whether gathered at home or on the hillside. For in seeking to know you, we are all one. Beloved presence, we Send this love through our hearts to this beautiful earth to touch and bless and bring balance to her systems. Wholeness to all that she is. Blessing to her creatures. And we send this love about the earth that it might touch the heart of every single person in the earth. For you are that love in every heart. And in this love, we are one. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Please join me. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. Feeling its power once again. Divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world, enjoying the beauty of its radiance. Once again, divine love flows through my heart, enfolding and blessing the world. So, here, now, within each. Amen. In the silence there is peace In the silence there is unspoken joy In the silence there Release from a world full of chaos and noise.
So I wait for these precious moments when I hear all that can never be said. And right here in this holy silence, I find God. I find myself in the silence there is peace in the silence there is unspoken joy in the silence, there's release from a world full of chaos and noise. And I wait for these precious moments when I hear all that can never be said. And right here in this holy silence, I find God, I find myself. these precious moments when I hear all that can never be said and right here in this precious moment I find God I find God I find don't want a moment like that to end, do we? Thank you, Fusion. Thank you, Carol. There are CDs for those of us in the sanctuary available on the patio after service. Carol, wow. So I'm Veronica Wolf. I am delighted to be back and share a few of the upcoming events at Unity of Walnut Creek with you. In honor of Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday, next Sunday we have Reverend James Trapp here. Now, I saw James a couple weeks ago in Sacramento, and you're in for a real treat. He will be speaking on the significance of Dr. King's message uh, in today's world in light of current and racial tension in our country. And this, if you didn't know it, is the year of forgiveness. And we are launching a powerful focus with a special Sunday program on January 25th. So we have the founder of the Worldwide Forgiveness Alliance joining us. And with a panel, we can come and listen to inspiring stories of forgiveness as they share different understandings of their forgiveness experience. What a beautiful way to start the year. 
And ta-da, it's crab feed time again, almost. So save the date, it's February 28th. It is the last Saturday in February. This is a great event for our Unity family. Those of you that go know that we have a blast. So tickets go on sale in a couple of weeks. You can pick them up then. And now Reverend David, enjoy. Ready for new classes? Learning? First of all, I, ju I just gotta say, uh, Sheila and I are James Trapp fans. Okay, we're so thrilled that he's coming to, to be here. This, this marvelous man, uh, wherever he's been, he's had churches of over a thousand just because of the inspiration and the, the beautiful way spirit flows through, through his being. So I'm so thrilled he's, he's going to be here. He was president and CEO of uh, Unity Worldwide Ministries for some seven years. And I had the honor of working on that board that worked with him through the time. So it's yeah, a very special place in my heart. And our classes, now, there's, there's, it's one thing to know about them, but it's another thing to be able to really get there. So I want to explain something to you. Okay, Heaven on Earth Intuition, Mondays, 7 o'clock, Will Scott. Will's one of our great teachers. He is tremendous in this ability and knowledge on how to connect with and bring in a life really created through that intuitive awareness and intelligence. And because Harry Potter taught us about time turners, you can come back at the same time and go to Sheila's class on the creative process. Okay, no problem at all. And this, uh, we've been working through these weeks uh, of the new year on this powerful capacity that we have as spiritual beings to create and what an opportunity to have that time with Sheila. And then I got talked into doing the fairy tales. Okay, Tuesdays, uh, over the years we've touched on them and to actually go into the, the powerful, amazing symbology that teaches us about our spiritual journey. Uh, is going to be a really fun time. And Thursdays, uh, we asked Holly Reese, some of you uh, know, know Holly, she's a part of our spiritual community. She has a wonderful book and from her experience of going through the healing of extreme illness into vibrant health and well-being. And she touches all the different parts of wholeness. And so the opportunity to really learn, uh, learn from her and work with her in this is uh, uh, something that we're so very excited about. Wonderful classes. And again, if you've got a time turner, you can do them all. <laughs> and now, the moment you've been waiting for, until the gong <laughs> sounds, go ahead and meet and greet those neighbors around you. Hi, good to see you. Yeah, it's good to be here. I'm glad. I'm glad. Okay, don't sit down. Don't sit down. Let's get ready to rock a little bit. Join Dot and me in singing God in everything. I see joy, I see peace, I see goodness surrounding me, I see love in every breath I I see God in everything. I see happiness. I see freedom. I see the beauty that lives in me. I see perfection in what life brings. I see God in everything. I feel, I feel love. 
I see happiness, I feel freedom. I feel the beauty that lives in me. I feel perfection in what life brings. I feel God in everything. I choose, I choose joy. I choose peace. I choose goodness surrounding me. I choose the love in every breath I breathe. I choose God in everything. I choose happiness. I choose freedom. I choose the beauty that lives in me. I choose perfection in what life brings. I choose God in everything. I choose God in I choose God in everything. See trees of green and red roses too. I see them bloom for me and for you. And I, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. of blue and clouds of white the bright blessed days and dark sacred nights and I, I, I think to myself what a wonderful world Colors of the rainbow, oh, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of people passing by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do you do? I, I hear babies crying, I'll watch them grow, they'll learn much more than I'll ever know, and I, I, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Colors of the rainbow, oh, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of people passing by. I see friends shaking hands, saying, how do they do?
I, I hear babies crying. I watch them grow. They'll learn much more than I'll ever know. And I, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. And I think to She's right, you know. <laughs> it is, and we are going to create a wonderful year. We, we started looking, last Sunday we, we started on understanding how, as co-creators of our lives, this beautiful spiritual energy that flows through us, that by our attunement we're able to to lift and fill with ever greater goodness. And we started looking at how to do that. And we, we looked at some steps and we had a workshop in the afternoon. And, but I noticed there was something there that we really didn't address. And yet when I talk to people about what they want in a year, it generally shows up. How many of you would really like a prosperous year? Is that okay? We're going to do that? And those of you that really like struggle, you're at the wrong place. <laughs> because what we know is this divine love that is here, this, this infinite presence that we connect with, wants to pour its good into and through our lives. And the reason is because you're so loved. You are this marvelous spiritual being. And this divine presence wants to empower that which you came here to do. The beautiful work, the creation that happens through you. In the Great Depression, Charles Fillmore, Unity's co-founder, realized that people were caught in a place where they did not understand how to create from their spiritual self. They gave all the power to, to, the, to the world around them. And so he wrote a book on prosperity and began to explain to people that it is the spiritual self that has the power to create and that there is always more than enough for everything that is before us. And part of our growth is to accept that. Because... Remember you did that one presence and one power thing? That means just one. Okay, that doesn't mean we've got God and we've got materiality. That means it's all divine. And part of our job assignment, wandering through this third dimensional experience, is to awaken to that. And one of the things that we do is we do that by seeing this material realm as spiritual and working to awaken to this divine love that creates in and through it. So, so many beautiful things and ways of understanding this. But at the core of it, it we keep going back to Jesus' teachings 
but in particular for abundance. The, the great one is the feeding of the 5,000. One of the things that makes it so different is that it talks about his process. And so we understand that Jesus is that symbol of the Christ self of, or of this spiritual being that we each are. And of course, it's called different things in different traditions, but it is that spiritual self that you are. And so when we look at that, we realize here's how we connect with that aspect of our being to manifest abundance. So I want to, I want to share the uh, story with you and then touch on my understanding of how he's instructing us to do that. From the Gospel of Matthew. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish. And looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. The number of those that ate was about 5,000 men besides women and children. Quite a story. Again, my understanding is in those steps is essentially the understanding, the direction on how we as spiritual beings accomplish bringing into manifestation the abundance and the fulfillment of the work that we're about. So now when I looked at those, however, I realized, well, there's this step and there's this step and there's that. And we ended up with eight. Now, I don't know about you, but more than three and I get really confused. So I, I th went ahead and, and put it up on PowerPoint so we can, we can kind of keep straight. The truth is, there's a few in there that I want to focus on because they are really the pivotal point in consciousness. Now, if we, if we just start going through the story, the first thing he has, he has them bring them here to me, he says. Okay, so that's, that's just awareness. You know, what is it that I'm dealing with here? becoming consciously aware. And then he directed the people to sit down on the grass. Now, in our process, the people are symbolic of that stuff that's always running around, worrying, am I going to get it? Am I not going to get it? And so he's bringing that part of ourselves into balance. And it's done within us through the feeling of serenity. If you get into serenity, all those thoughts that are trying to figure everything out, they kind of quiet down, don't they? Then he takes the loaves and the fishes, an act of literally accepting what is there, and then we get to the part where there's a shift. At this point, he looks up to heaven. So when he's looking up to heaven, we're talking about the raising of our awareness to another level. Okay, at that greater level, at that awareness of the divine presence then, he gives thanks, the experience of gratitude. He breaks the loaves, which is a releasing of the limits within us. And I'll go over how that, how that happens. And then he gives them to the disciples. Now at this point, we're taking what we've accomplished within and starting to build it into the outer. So that's where we actually engage in outer giving, passing it out, sending it on. And then the disciples give it to the people. 
Now, the people are like those parts of us that were just milling around all over the place, okay? They're that, that part of us that gets caught in all the outer. But as this is given, what happens? As we give, as we focus on that, we're touched by that flow, and we become open. Open in both our giving and receiving. So, hey, let's walk through and take a little more time with each step. The first one, awareness. Bring them here to me. Now, what's he aware of? He is aware of that which is provided. He's not focusing on that which is not there. Okay, now part of the understanding of our spiritual selves is anytime we're in a, a, a situation of lack. Okay, what happens is the very nature of every situation is wholeness because that divine presence is everywhere. So if only a part of that is in our experience and there's a part we don't have, that means that is already present for us in the spiritual. And so it becomes our job to bring it from that spiritual uh, giving into the material expression. And that begins with awareness. The awareness of what is already there created. And then, again, they're directing the people to, to sit down. Have you, have you ever noticed when we kind of do that, I don't have enough thing, it's not working, I've got this problem? There's these people that run around in our head, and they talk about the people. They say, oh, she shouldn't have said that. That's a, you know, why'd they do that? Why didn't they do it this way? How come this? If only that hadn't happened. You got people like that in your head? Okay, make them sit down. Okay, and how do we do that? Well, we can't outthink them. So we go, and, and this is where the change begins to start. Okay, we go to the feeling of serenity. Because if we enter into that feeling, because it's spiritual energy flowing through the heart, it's greater than those thoughts. So when you're feeling serene, they quiet, don't they? Okay, so that feeling of serenity. And then he takes the five loaves and the two fish acceptance so now from this now spiritually we're taking a hold and we're saying this is the way it is this is given now acceptance is a beautiful thing you can always tell when you're not in acceptance it's called complaint <laughs> oh this shouldn't be that way don't you <laughs> okay that's non-acceptance that is saying, God, you screwed it up again. I know how it should be. Okay? Acceptance. This is the way it is. Okay. Holding that awareness that this presence that we've begun to touch and move through us in the serenity is here as a part of the whole. Next slide. And now the real work begins. And this is, this is amazing, the power that is here in these steps. The looking up to heaven, that is the change of consciousness. And when you hear it described by many people, they're going to talk to you about a thought. Well, you're, you're thinking about God. You're affirming this. Wonderful. Thoughts don't do it. It takes feeling because God, that divine power of our spirit flows through our feeling world. And that is where the power is. And the feeling of the divine presence is the feeling of love. So we feel the love. And in that, we are in a different consciousness. Now, you felt that, haven't you? It's real. And it's not like what else was going on. It, it is an amazing growth of the soul to learn that you are so loved that everything 
is provided for you. Isn't that an amazing experience? And we receive it through that love. And then from there, there becomes a gratitude. Because that the feeling of love, and suddenly we realize that love is every place. It's in that place that I was just struggling with. It's in that place I don't know what to do. It's in that place where things have not worked. I haven't understood. It doesn't matter. The love's there. And we realize that is everywhere. And, and, the, and the gratitude. I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful. Join me. I am grateful. I am grateful. I am grateful. That beautiful, beautiful feeling. Again, I am grateful, I am grateful, I am grateful. The new creation is happening through our feeling worlds. It's happening through the power of spirit flowing by our hearts. It's happening by the expansion of our experience of the presence of God. And then we get to that next step. He broke the loaves. In other words, now we're taking... And we're changing and allowing the form of the past to fade away. Okay, this is where the limits go. Now, this is our year of forgiveness. And we're going to get into that. And, you know, I, it was a legit, legitimate question. We started looking at the year of forgiveness. A whole year on forgiveness? Oh, my goodness. But I... Some of us have been working with it for a long time. God, if we could do it in a year, wouldn't that be fabulous? <laughs> and what, what happens is, this, the, as we uh, connect again and again into this, this pure spiritual consciousness, the pure love, it flows in and through and it touches the pain that we carry and heals it. And as we heal, we let go of the limiting perceptions that we've carried. I'm not okay. It's not okay to have lots or for this all to flow easily out of my life because I'm time for me to get on to other things. All those things that we hold as, as limits. I can't trust. I can't open because of this hurt I carry that heals by that love flowing in and through ourselves. And those, those steps, that's the power. Next slide. And then what happens is we bring that now from the spiritual experience and the inner experience to where we're building in the third dimension. We move it. It's the giving to the disciples. Now what we're doing is teaching the spiritual qualities of our being bringing in them into alignment for creation and expression. We do that by active giving. Now, have you ever noticed on the spiritual path how the spiritual thing's kind of the inverse of the physical thing? Okay, if you, if, if you see that life is the physical world, if you want more, you take. In the spiritual world, if you want more, you give. Because we understand life very differently. And that's part of what's happening here. We are entering into a different awareness of life itself. We're stepping into the maturity of ourselves as spiritual being. And that joyous experience of giving. Now, I know we've got people who are very generous and people who are committed to the experience of tithing. And you've got to jump up on it. <laughs> because one of the things that builds in us is that that discipline of giving in that generous and always focusing back on God as our source. What a, what a powerful, powerful experience the giving is. And it builds it into the third dimension. I've seen wonderful ideas that kind of stay at that mental. Do you know some folks like that? Great ideas. Now they're life. Let's bring it all the way in complete to where it is expressed by our beings in every level of consciousness. And then the disciples give to the people. Now, uh, we're back to that people in us. 
okay, those parts that can kind of go all over the place. But what happens is we're now inviting them into that part of ourselves into openness and receptivity, the part that can get caught in the doubt or the question or, oh, I love that, but the yeah, but folks. Okay, as this flows through us, they're filled, they're satisfied. Because we're not only giving materiality, we are experiencing spiritual food. We're experiencing the love and care of the divine. So let's go to that next slide. I want to go back, because here's where the change takes place. Okay, this looking up to heaven, the raising our consciousness through the feeling of love itself. So I invite you, let's enter into that. Okay, let's just take a moment and feel that love. You may want to close your eyes and just remember a moment of, of love. And for me, I, I, I notice it comes sometimes easiest when I remember really loving someone. And you know, I have people in my world and sometimes when they're, they're in a point of struggle, I can feel that compassion. Oh, I care so much for them. And that love that flows out and surrounds them and how often we've been that one that the love is surrounded and cared for and lifted up. And you've felt that love, haven't you? Feel it now. Feel that beautiful, beautiful feeling of love. And be aware that it flows into every part of our lives. How grateful we are that it does touch the material world, the flow of money and things and people and opportunities. Just God's love flowing to us and through us. And it touches the healing of the physical body and it touches the clarity of mind and spirit touches harmony between those we love and guidance and clarity. I am so grateful. I am so grateful. I am so grateful. Join me. I am so grateful. I am so grateful. I am so grateful. And we let it simply move through our being. We don't even have it to consciously Directed, it moves to those places that are that carry pain within us, and we heal and we open. So, I invite you to bring your attention back to the outer, but keep that beautiful feeling of love and gratitude there. In our next slide, 12 basketfuls left over, more than enough. More than enough. Twelve is the number of fulfillment. The direction that's given there is that there is more than enough to fulfill the purpose you came here for. To fulfill what's on your heart. More than enough to fulfill the beautiful purpose of your being. And one of the ways I keep bringing my attention back there as I go through and see, oh yes, there's this and that, and what about this, is to go back to that beautiful understanding. God is my instant, constant, abundant supply. Can you feel that presence? God is my instant, constant, abundant supply. No question, that's my source. That's what's caring for me. Again, God is my instant, constant, abundant supply. We are blessed. We are cared for in every way, in every moment. Once again, God is my instant, constant, abundant supply. And as we know that, as we let that beautiful love flow through us, as a friend of mine once said, Live long and prosper.
Thank you, Reverend David. I loved it all, loved it all. Our heart ministers are available today after service to offer prayer support for your challenges or your celebrations. You can see them on, this, on the grounds and in the sanctuary praying with others. And they're wearing the lavender stoles, so seek them out if you would like to share a challenge or celebration. Your prayer requests can also be sent online uh, anytime, day or night. Now I'm going to ask everyone in the sanctuary to take out that connection card from the seat pocket in front of you. A little bit like this. And I invite you to take a moment and fill it out and add a prayer request or any questions or comments that you have. If you're new to Unity, you're invited to fill out the card and stop by the welcome table out on the patio, and we look forward to meeting you. So thank you for checking the box. If you are joining us in our weekly spiritual focus, let's see how good the memory is right now. Our spiritual focus this week is God is our instant, constant, abundant supply. Nice. And the ushers will receive your card with the offering at the end of the music. And now it's time for our prosperity celebration. So for credit card donations, there are envelopes in the seat pocket in front of you. And for those at home, again, there's an easy button to click and donate on the Watch Live page. So the lesson for this week comes from Unity's co-founder, Charles Fillmore. He taught that our spiritual connection opens us to God's abundance, abundance expressing in our lives. And he said, be thankful for every blessing that you gain and grateful for every demonstration as if it were an unexpected treasure dropped into your lap. This will keep your heart fresh, for true thanksgiving may be likened to rain falling upon ready soil, refreshing it and increasing its productiveness. And now I invite you to take your tithe, your love offering in your hand, being aware that God is the source of all your good. And repeat our affirmation with me together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And I am grateful. On a clear day, rise and look around you, and you'll see who you are. On a clear day, how it will astound you that the glow of your being outshines every star. You'll feel part of every mountain, sea, and shore. You can hear both far and near a world you never heard before. On a clear day, on that clear day, you can see forever.
eyes and look around you and you'll see just who you are on that clear day how it will astound you that the glow of your being outshines every star you feel part Let's enfold these beautiful beings with our hearts and share our blessing together. Children, you are loved, special, and important. The light of God shines through you. And let's take hands and share our peace song together. No, it's the prayer of protection, isn't it? Yes. Okay, let's do that one. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Now our peace song. <laughs> and the light and the peace in the earth right now. So let it shine and have fun. 